Hey everybody, welcome back to The Hunt. I'm Trish, super excited to introduce my next guest to you tonight. His name is Trent Killian, and he is the VP of Marketing for Slurp Shots. <laughs> Slurp Shots. Welcome to the show. Trent, are you with us? Yes, indeed. How are you doing? Awesome. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Great. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Yeah, no, thanks for joining us. So I'm super excited to talk to you today. I just love these stories of entrepreneurial ship and you are just such a great example of that. So let's just start right off the bat and tell the audience where they can find slurp shots and um, in terms of purchasing and social media. For sure. Um, so you, you actually can buy Slurp Shots right on our website. It's slrrp.com. We just launched an online store. Um, we're also available in 45 states, and we're, I think, in 11 countries now. Um, but largely, as far as in the U.S., you can get them uh, in a lot of liquor stores, gr some grocery stores. You can get our malt-based product, um, which is slightly lower alcohol content. They're called our Slurp Minis right here. <laughs> Um, you can get them in some bars and whatnot as well. And uh, yeah, they're just, they're, it, things are going really well. That's fantastic. Okay, so these are ready to drink gelatin alcoholic shots. Yep. <laughs> yes, indeed. So they're basically pre made, pre packaged uh, alcohol infused gelatin shots. And they're, uh, we actually use a proprietary plant based blend. So they're vegetarian friendly, um, they're, they're also gluten free. For all intents and purposes, they are vegan as well. We just don't have the certified vegan um, certification just yet, but we're working on that. Okay, I mean, this is such a great idea. I mean, for so many reasons, but I'm watching the, the screen now so you can see, hopefully everybody saw that. Um, so let's just go back to the beginning. How, how did this all start? Yeah, so um, our founder, Edward Farley, he had the idea for it. I uh, just saw a need in the marketplace and people were wasting a lot of time making jello shots and um, didn't really have a good convenient option. Um, also, traditional gelatin is made with animal scraps and you have to have it refrigerated. It's kind of gross and uh, we just thought there was a better solution out there. So Ed uh, found Stephen Houck, who's now our CEO. Um, from there, they found um, Matt Vernon, who's our chief uh, operations officer. And uh, together, they, they basically started this thing up on a shoestring budget, um, hired me on a couple of years later. So that they started that. Uh, we basically launched in Las Vegas only in March 2018. And obviously, we've had uh, a great deal of growth since then. It's really amazing. I'm always fascinated with what it takes to go from just having the idea to actually seeing something on the shelf and going through that whole process. Um, just I mean, sure. fascinating uh, to me. How long did that whole process take? About, uh, I would say about two years as far as actually getting the consistency right, the flavors right, the way we wanted them, um, figuring out the packaging, the packaging design, um, creating our cases so that they can be easily displayed at retail and things like that. There was a, a lot of uh, a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of late nights for for the four of us at that time. Yeah, true startup mentality, right? <laughs> for sure. So where, sure. where? Let's talk about you for a minute. Where did you come from? How did they find you? Um, so uh, Steve and I knew had known each other for a long time. Um, we both come from the beer industry. I worked at a marketing agency supporting uh, Coors uh, Coors Brewery, and then. And that later on, uh, Miller Coors, and now it's even Molson Coors. Um, but so had a ton of experience in that space. Stephen Houck also came from uh, Coors Brewery and then did some work with um, Oscar Blues and also Stone Brewery and helped, uh, I believe he helped both of them go international. Um, but so he's got a huge amount of business development experience in the alcohol space. I had a lot of experience in marketing, specifically, mostly for beer. Uh, some spirits, but um, you know, we basically all had our unique skill sets and specialties and basically uh, tried to bring it to life. That's fantastic. So are you based in Las Vegas and are these manufactured in the US <laughs> or how does that work? No, actually um, we, we uh, outsource production, but we do all the design quality control and all that. Um, but as, as far as uh, where I'm located, we are, we are all across the country. So. Um, our founder, our chief operations officer, a couple other members from the team are in uh, Los Angeles. Our CEO, our uh, VP of 
um, operations and finance are all in Denver. Um, we've got a couple of folks out on the East Coast and we have sales, sales folks all across the country. Yeah, well, that's the way of the world now, right? I mean, you just find sure. the best person to be on the team and then everybody works remote, come together when you, when you have to. But are you producing yeah, kind of and manufacturing? Yeah. What's that? Sorry, I was just gonna say it, it's kind of wild because we prior, you know, we started just before the pandemic and uh, we were already very well set up to weather that as far as our actual employee base. We all we all work remote. So. All right. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So I think we all know that alcohol sales went up during the pandemic, right? Is that a true yes. statement? Yes, uh, generally across the board. I mean, just having been in the alcohol industry for a long time, you know, alcohol is one of the few categories that's Consider recession proof and you know pandemic proof because people drink when they're happy, they drink when they're sad. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, we were a little concerned about it because our product is a social and celebratory product, and uh, for a bit of time there, there was uh, not a ton to celebrate in the world, and you know there were some dark days. And um, luckily, you know, people still you know they have that desire to ha keep those connections and make those connections. So people figured out ways to still find things to celebrate and still, uh, you know, do do it in a way that, that really works well for our product as well. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there was a lot of Zoom social hours going on. <laughs> for right? sure. Yeah. I did a few of them myself, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but on the other hand, I guess that time gave you the opportunity to work out some kinks, really build the brand, focus on marketing. Is that, Are you heavy on yes, social sure. media as well? Yeah, we've um, we recently, you know, with some of the new funding, we hired a new um, digital marketing manager. She has a, a exceptional background in this space, um, so she's really helped increase our efforts in that in that uh, in the digital marketing atmosphere and social media specifically. Yeah, because that's kind of the name of the game, right? But you are in what over twenty thousand retail stores, some big box stores yep. like Walmart, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, Walmart, we've got a test going with some Costco's, I believe, still. Um, but Walmart's been doing really well for us. I believe Florida is probably our leading state for them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's gone really well, and uh, you know, we've um, we're trying to pivot some of our focus to the on-premise, so bars and restaurants, because that's a really good, um, you know, with our product being kind of the first of its kind in this category and kind of paving the way in a new category. Uh, trial is a really big deal. So making sure people get to try the shot and they don't have to, you know, dig it, dig their finger around the edges of the cup or anything like that. Um, we've worked really hard on the texture and obviously having it be a plant-based product, it opens up the market to a lot of people that normally wouldn't have been able to partake in uh, in the celebratory experience that are gelatin shots. Now that's a good point, but help me educate me for a second. Isn't gelatin by nature not plant-based? Correct. So usually it's like uh, pig tendons and right. cartilage and things like that ground up into a powder that essentially creates a semi-stable substance. Um, what we've done is there's there's a plant-based alternative. It's essentially seaweed. Um, so it's it, it uh, you know basically you you uh, like are able to boil it down and yeah. create yeah carrageen. So you're able to boil it down and still create that semi-stable substance that people enjoy about gelatin shots, but it doesn't have any of those bad things. Yeah, like red seaweed and starch, basically. So that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is a great yeah. alternative for, for sure. So how did you guys pick what flavors to go with first? Did you do some focus groups? Or how, <laughs> how did that work? I mean, we, we were on such a, a shoestring budget. We essentially um, made a bunch of samples that were popular flavors in other categories. So, you know, took a look at a bunch of different categories, the seltzer category, um, different cider categories and things like that what sort of fruits they were they were pulling into their products and what were selling really well. Um, so we, you know, um, basically made a bunch of samples, handed them out to our friends and whatnot, uh, ha had a, uh, you know, a little bit of R&D in that space and uh, just making sure that our friends liked them. And, you know, we, whenever we met some new people, if we had extra uh, samples, we'd, we'd try to get their take on it, you know. Um, the latest round, so the mashup flavors that you've got there, that's our, um, that was our second variety pack that we released. Um, those ones we did do a survey and basically threw it out to a bunch of people that we knew, a bunch of people that we didn't, and uh, let them know which flavors we, we really liked and which ones we thought were spot on for the actual, what we were trying to achieve with the flavor. So for example, orange vanilla truly tastes like a creamsicle. Um, 
so you know we we threw out maybe 10 flavors on that and narrowed it down to five based on people's feedback and interest in the different flavors very very cool that's the, probably one of the most fun parts of the process right is product development and new product development yeah it for sure it's funny though you know you, sometimes you get a flavor and you're like this tastes nothing nothing like what i was hoping for and you, you just have to kind of go around yeah. and around and try to try to dial mm -hmm. that in to make sure that it tastes the right way you know hey, Trent, hold that thought for me we got to take a quick commercial break we're going to be back with more with you but uh, folks at home you've been listening to trent killian he's the vp of marketing for slurp shots you can find them at slurp.com and on social media i'm trish you're watching the hunt see you in a minute